Hello everybody and welcome to this video where today we are going to be talking a little bit about On the Walls and in the Streets, American Poetry Broadsides from the 1960s by James D. Sullivan. And this is one of those um, library copies, I guess, that has the dust jacket glued on to the hardcover stuff whatever so i got this book all excited because when i was doing research on um the broadside stuff for project broadside i was like oh i could get this book and then get a bunch more information that would be very helpful da -da 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 -da, whatever so um this is from the university of illinois press and James D. Sullivan is an instructor in English in Illinois Central College, Peoria. We, we just have to get into this. This is going to be really difficult. And just so you know, this isn't a review on the whole book. This is me bitching about the introduction. That's it. Look at this. On the walls and in the streets. Look at how fucking street this fucking thing is. Look at that. Uh-huh, uh-huh. You want to know how street this is? It's got this cool... It says introduction, all cool, like, whoa. But then, right under that, it says American Sam is that. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? So I had to fucking look it up. So let, let's see what James Sullivan is so proud of himself for doing. Sam is that. It's the same as that. No, that's not what it means. That's what I was thinking. Um, the clandestine copying and distribution of literature banned by the state, especially formally in the communist countries of Eastern Europe. Oh, you're thinking. Oh, I see what this guy's doing. He's trying to add a little bit here with his introduction called American... Same as that. Fucking stupid. It, it does not fit. It is not correct. This is dumb. Next, we get to the introduction here. A materialist hermeneutic. Hermeneutic. Okay. What the fuck is that? So I had to fucking look that up. I haven't even fucking gotten in the book yet, and I've had to look up two words already. This is fucking ridiculous. So I go and I look this up. It's an adjective concerning interpretation, especially of the Bible or literary text. So basically, this fucking D-bag is like, oh, I'm really going to show the academic and literati elite how knowledgeable I am about words that have meanings. While I write this book about basically 1960s street art. What a fucking douchebag. This whole first 27 pages is full of douchebaggery. Full of it. So much so that in my annotations right here, I wrote asshole. This guy is so up his own fucking ass. Th this is why... Okay. This is so frustrating. There are people, on BookTube even, there are people here who get off on this shit and are like, oh, yeah, that, that's, that's some fucking literature. Those are some fucking words. Why the fuck would anyone write... A history of a group of people, a type of people, a type of art, in a way that was so fucking foreign to the people who would pick this book up. It, it, oh, okay. There was something that I did learn out of this fucking garbage bullshit. Stuart Hall's model of mass communication. This guy is such a fucking douchebag. He's trying so hard to come up with, like, scientific method for 
broadsides being cheap and inexpensive to produce. He even says it in here somewhere. It's popular because it's inexpensively, you could produce it inexpensively, um, and it's a way to get the word out quickly. That's it. That's all there is. All this other 27 pages of, like, pontificating on things that may be, it, it's, um, ugh. it's so frustrating. Oh, the main question then becomes not what does it mean, but what did people do with it? Uh, oh my god. My god. Oh, and then there was another study about this, you know. This study thus includes, amid its discussion of some quite compelling cultural productions, discussions also of some broadsides with poems that, in isolation from their material setting, might not ordinarily demand such attention. Okay. Let, let's do it like this. If I were to take a line out of this book, put it on a billboard, and on that billboard have, like, fireworks going off, um, I don't know, cows walking across the front of it, um, just all sorts of chaos, that would draw more attention than if I were to close this book and throw this book into an incinerator. I think a better introduction would have been common sense. Or, yeah, no shit. Also, good titles for the introduction of this book. Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, and then finally, um, on page 12 of this introduction, he asks the question, what are broadsides? Okay, so what the fuck w were, were these pages? What the fuck was all this? What are broadsides? I define them broadly. <laughs> to include all single, unbound, printed sheets. Now, this is the thing that I actually learned from this. So, James, you taught me something in spite of yourself. Um... Jesus. So basically, I've always heard of... Where, where is that other bookmark? Oh. I've always heard of broadsides and broadsheets um, kind of in the same breath. Like, um, like people inter, interuse those words, interchange meanings or whatever. Um, but I never realized there was a difference. And what he says in the book is that, and it makes total fucking sense once you hear it, a broadside is a single-sided thing, and it's something that you could, like, put up on a wall. So, like, this blood rag would be considered a broadside because you could hang it up and um, everything that's on it is on the one side. Whereas a broad sheet is something you hand to somebody that can have stuff on the front and the back that they could like flip over and look at. But a broad side is just one side of the broad sheet. Does that make sense? And I was like, oh, that's a fucking interesting little thing this guy fucking just pulled off. This book really feels like there's not a lot of meat to it. And he is trying so hard to talk about as much stuff as he can. But he just does it by... Uh, it's so fucking annoying. But here, here's the table of contents, just so you know. So, th this book is only 168 pages. There is, however, after that, because this book has endnotes, which sucks, it has, like, uh, 30 pages, or, yeah, 30 pages of notes and um, indexes and shit like that. So, real cool pages, the Broadside Press, Broadside Series, and the Black Arts Movement. That's in the first chapter. I'm reading that. And I'm going to come out and say, 
that I don't know if a old white dude college professor who talks the way he talks in here should be telling anyone or me like what it's like to be a real cool guy you know in um fear and loathing in las vegas that bit where the where the dude is at the drug convention and this guy who has no idea what marijuana is or anything he's like just talking all this shit and all the cops are like oh and um raul duke and his attorney are like going, what the fuck is this guy talking about um that's what i feel like when i'm reading this book like seriously like i just it's so then the next chapter is power to the people's mimeo machines um, signed edition, investing the cultural capital of Robert Lowell. Um, chapter four is the aura of the text, fine printing, and the poem as art object. And the poem as art object. That doesn't sound like it's written correctly. And then finally, the last chapter is Ginsburg in the closed stacks. The library as site of reception. I f fucking don't like this guy at all. I really don't. I don't know. And apparently uh, Pasadena City College didn't like him either. So. There is that book. I will slowly be reading through that, but because I'm fucking hate reading it now... Um, I can't read more than a couple pages a day in that, or else I will fucking want to jump out this fucking window. So, um, don't get it. S so far, so far, the, um, it it's a no-buy. Um, that could change. I highly doubt it, but it could change. If you want to know about broadsides, just write a poem on a piece of paper and stick it to something. And that's pretty much all you need to know. And there will be more of this. So thank you for your support. Um, thank you for subscribing to this channel. I appreciate all of you. Join and keep buying my books. And I will talk to you guys later. Type hard. I just want to give a quick thanks to those people who make these videos possible. Anarchy Creo and my followers on Patreon. I appreciate the hell out of you guys. And thank you so much for keeping me going to keep this content possible. You guys are awesome. And if you'd like to join the career of the Anarchy Crew, just hit the join button beneath this video. And if you'd like to become a member of my Patreon, you can run over to the link down below to do that as well. Thank you.